Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome back from the break. This is Shabbat service, the second segment of Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this is the recording for Saturday, July 29th, 2023 on the Gregorian calendar and in the Hebrew calendar year of 5783. It is the month of Av and it is the 11th day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Well, in the upcoming week, we have the Bible study, which is ongoing. We will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 through 7 this upcoming week. And also for those that are engaged in um, the class hearing from God, we are meeting on uh, Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our free conference call.com channel. And we'll see you then on Tuesday night. For those that did not uh, get a chance to participate this time in the class, we will offer it again in the future. So if you are interested please reach out to me i will keep your name on a list and when we do uh offer the class again i will let you know when that will be uh, we will certainly be moving on to other classes of, of course in the future but um and if if you're not engaged in the class and with us on tuesday evenings and you have prayer requests absolutely we still do we still do corporate prayer on tuesday evening as well so we would be glad and, and honored to lift up your prayer request. So you can certainly attach that message to the post that I do on social media. And I do post to MeWe, to Gab, to Facebook, and to USA.life. So there are four social media platforms that I generally do post to uh, for every service. So that really is um, the announcements. Um, for this week. Next Shabbat, next Saturday is the first uh, the first Shabbat for the month of August. So we will be having Holy Communion as we do every um, every first Shabbat of, of a Gregorian calendar month. And as you know, um, on Rosh, Rosh Kadesh's, uh, on the eve of a new uh, new Hebrew calendar month, and on the new moon, we also do Holy Communion as well. So generally, every month you have a chance to come to the table of the Lord twice. Um, there are some months, and depending on what's going on, like um, Passover, uh, we have Passover and First Fruits, we have uh, more opportunity um, for coming to the table of the Lord. Um, but generally, every month there's two opportunities. So this is all the announcements that I actually have for this upcoming week. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna get started with the second part of Shabbat with prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you so much for today. We thank you uh, that we are able to come in your presence. This is the day that you sanctified us holy. It is our day of rest, and we're resting in you, Father God, because we love you. We want to be in your presence and feel you near us. Father God, we ask your Holy Spirit to continue to lead us, guide us, direct us through the entire sh remainder of Shabbat service, and to continue to guide us daily. You're, you're part, of, part of our being. Uh, we are housing the Holy Spirit. You, you are part of us as we have been um, redeemed and saved and born again and asked to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We are so honored to are here and to guide us and direct us. We thank you. You're an awesome teacher as well. Show us what we need to grasp. Show us what we need to incorporate into our being and our walk with the Lord. Open the eyes of our heart. Open the ears of our heart that we may be receptive to the word that we hear. We thank you so much. Father God, we give you all our honor and all praise. Praises go to you. You deserve all the glory. 
May everything that we do glorify your holy name. We pray this prayer in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And in the ancient days, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, sounded the shofar to gather, to gather Paniah Israel to worship. We're going to sound a shofar right now. In a moment, I will be pausing for you to listen to praise and worship. As I mentioned on part one, we do not incorporate music in our recording um, for, for the sole reason when we first started to do online recording, there was a lot of issues, people losing their platforms. So we decided to, to just not even go there. Now, I know there's a lot of a lot of recordings that are being done with a disclaimer now and that is being allowed we haven't touched it at all we're just uh what i usually do is i will post i will post the scriptures a series of songs um and then i will post part one and part two for for both on youtube and rumble then another series of songs now this is to the four social media platforms that i post to so the first series of course can go to part one the second are suggestions um for songs that you can listen to uh, for part two so of course these are suggestions if you have your own praise and worship and prefer to to do that that's fine it's so important that pra praise and worship is done. Um, just because we don't incorporate it in the recording doesn't mean it's not important. It, actually, it is one of the most important elements of any service. We are created to praise and worship the creator, and it's something we will, we will be doing in eternity. So absolutely, it is very, very important. So yes, this is why I do a lot of posts on the social media platforms of songs. Because praise and worship is so very important. Um, so what you can do with that, um, the beauty of that is, um, now, if if we were to do it like other others are doing it with a disclaimer and playing music, yes, I could I could mention whose song, uh, who who the artist is, and what have you, but um, they're not getting actual credit for. Uh, for their work that they do for the kingdom, and so we want to help these uh, the, these musicians that bring us anointed music. Also, this is their calling for the kingdom of heaven. So, by clicking on to that post from the social media platform, it is redirecting you right to that artist's YouTube channel. So you're listening to their their song as praise and worship on their and their YouTube channel. And what happens is, is the views, they get X amount of views and YouTube tallies out. I don't know how many views it is, but they tally it out and, and they get paid by YouTube. So they, they wouldn't get paid if, if you're hearing, just hearing the song and a, and a mention uh, in my recording. So, in essence, we're actually helping the artists, and that's what we want to do. We want to support our brothers and sisters that have a calling on their life to provide anointed music um, as part of their worship and part of their part of the kingdom of heaven. So at, by all means, I mean, I, I, we're at this point keeping it at that. Um, and also, when you are on those YouTube channels, uh, take a look around. They also have other songs that are there. And also, many of them have a hyperlink, which you can click on to, where you can actually purchase their music. And if you have the ability to, to, to do that, um, by all means, support them in any, mean, in, in a, any means that you are able to do, do so. Um, I'm sure they will greatly appreciate that as well. So with that being said, that's the reason why we do things the way we do. And uh, we certainly, you know, want to keep bringing the message to you and not having any issues. So 
this is why we started started it out this way and we've kept it this way so and it seems to be working i know there is a lot of posts for those that follow us on social media there is a lot of posts that that go on um so um but most people don't seem to really mind. They really enjoy the praise and worship, the, the multitude of praise and worship that they can uh, they can listen to. And some are being introduced to like the Hebrew worship. So that, so it's new for some people. And so they're really liking what they're what they're getting to um, partake of. So anyway, with that being said, I am going to pause it. And um, you can do some praise and worship and then come back, uh, hit play, and we will get into the Brit Kadasha portion. And there's not as, uh, it, it's a shorter Brit Kadasha portion this week. Um, and um, so we'll, we, we will be doing the Brit Kadasha and then we will get into the altar call and then close out Shabbat service for this week. So I'm going to pause it now for you to do praise and worship. Okay, we are back and we've got three areas of scripture from the Brit Kadasha, which is known as the New Covenant or the New Testament. Um, and actually, they're from three of the Gospels that we're going to be reading from this week. The first is Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 to 39. Seven woes. Then Yeshua spoke to the crowd and his disciples saying, the Torah scholars and Pharisees sit on the seat of Moses. So whatever they tell you, do and observe, but don't do what they do for they, for what they say they do not do. So it's what they're, what they're preaching is okay. What they're telling you to do is, is by the, by, by the Torah of, of Moses, but they're not, he, what he's saying is they're not following it themselves. So it's like a, do as I say, but not as I do uh, type of thing. So that's what he's basically saying. Don't do what, what, they are, what they are doing because they're not doing what is right. They tie up heavy loads, hard to carry, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves aren't willing to lift a finger to move them. All their works they do to be noticed by men. They make their teflon wide and their, their, their zitzera this are yeah, long, their fringes long. They love the place of honor at feasts, the best seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplaces, and to be called rabbi by men. But you are not to be called rabbi. The one, the for one is your teacher, and you are all brothers, and call no man on earth your father. For one is your father who is in heaven. Nor are you to be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Messiah. But the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. But woe to you, Torah scholars and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut people out of the kingdom of heaven. For you do not enter yourselves, nor do you let those enter who are trying to go in. Woe to you, Torah scholars and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you travel over land and sea to make one convert. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of Gehenna as yourself. Woe to you, blind guides, you say, whoever swears by the temple is not is it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obligated. O oh, fools and blind ones, which is greater, the gold or the temple that made the gold holy? And you say, whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the offering on it, he is obligated. O oh, blind ones, which is greater, the offering or the altar that makes the offering holy? Therefore, whoever swears by the altar swears both by the altar and everything on it. And whoever swears by the temple swears both by the temple and by him who dwells in it. And whoever swears by heaven swears both by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Woe to you, Torah scholars and Pharisees, hypocrites. You tithe, mint, and dill, and cumin, yet you have neglected the weightier matters of Torah, justice and mercy and faithfulness. It is necessary to do these things without ne neglecting the others. O blind guides, straining out a gnat while swallowing a camel. Woe to you, Torah scholars and, and Pharisees, hypocrites. 
You've cleaned the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and uncontrolled desire. O blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, so that the outside may become clean as well. Woe to you, Torah scholars and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, you appear righteous to men on the outside, but are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, Torah scholars and Pharisees, hypocrites. You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the monuments of the Zedekim, which is the holy ones. And you say, if we'd been alive in the days of our forefathers, we wouldn't have been partners with them in in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers. O oh, snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape the condemnation of Gehenna? Because of this, behold, I am sending you prophets and wise men and Torah scholars. Some of, you, some of them you will kill and execute at the stake, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. And so upon you shall come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Amen. I tell you, all these things will come upon this generation. Holy temple to be destroyed. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those sent to her. How often I long to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Look, your house is left to, to you desolate. For I tell you, you will never see me again until you say, Baruch of Abishen, Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So we, we, this is, you know, and we pray that our, the rest of our people do say that, you know, and recognize him as Lord. We want more and more people to come to the Lord. And then we have Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. Love ends the argument. One of the Torah scholars came and heard them debating, seeing that Yeshua had answered them well. He asked him, which commandment is first of all? Yeshua answered, the first is Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the Torah scholar said to him, you have spoken the truth, that he is Echad, and we know Echad is one, or composite oneness. And beside him, there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love the neighbor as oneself is much more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Yeshua saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared any longer to question him. And lastly, we're going to the Gospel of Luke. We're going to read from... Uh, Luke chapter 3, verses 1 to 22. Hmm. John the Immerser at the Jordan. It was now the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of the Galilee, and his brother Philip was tetrarch of the region of Iteria, and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came upon John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness, and he came into all the surrounding region on the Jordan, proclaiming an immersion of repentance for the removal of sin, as it is written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah the prophet. So we're going to remember I had just read this in part one in the half Torah. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of Adonai and make straight his path, make, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled up and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all humanity shall see the salvation of God. Therefore, John was saying to the crowds that came out to be immersed by him, 
you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, therefore produce fruits worthy of repentance and don't even bring, don't even begin to say among yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that from these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. Even now the ax is laid at the root of the tree. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Crowds were asking him, what should we do? He answered them saying, whoever has two coats, let him give, give to the one who has none. And whoever has food, let him do the same. Tax collectors also came to him to be immersed. Teacher, they said, what should we do? He said to them, do not take more than you are supposed to. Also soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He said to them, do not take things from anyone by force. Do not falsely accuse anyone and be content with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation and all were wondering in their hearts about John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered them all saying, as for me, and as for me, I immerse you with water, but one is coming who is mightier than I am. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandals. He will immerse you in the Ruach HaKadosh and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaffy will burn up with an inextinguishable fire. So with many other exhortations, John proclaimed good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, after being rebuked by John because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things Herod had done, added even this on top of them. All he shut up John in prison. Now, when all the people were immersed, Yeshua also was immersed, and while he was praying, heaven was open, and the Ruach Hakadash came down upon him in bodily form like a dove, and from out of heaven came a voice, You are my son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. And that is the end of the Brit Shop portion. So we are going to recap Torah, half Torah, and Brit Kadasha before we go into um, the altar call. So again, in last week's Parashat in Devarim, Moses began his personal speech summarizing Israel's 40-year history of wandering in the wilderness, leading up to the conquests of Sihon and Og. Um, the Israelites were now in the land of Moab, just east of the Jordan, waiting to enter the promised land. The significance of this week's parashat, we, we got the, the, the repeat of the Ten Commandments, the Shema, um, and also um, we, it also begins with the plea of Moses to uh, see if God would allow him to enter the, the promised land and, and the word was no. Each time um, Moses begged begged um, the Lord he was told no. Moses would die with the gener with the men of the, his generation in the desert. Um, so he um, was given the opportunity to see the promised land from the mount from Mount Pisgah. Uh, also known as Mount Nebo. And apart from this glimpse, Moses was forbidden to cross the Jordan and Joshua was going to take over um, and he would be leading the people into the promised land. Um, the call to obedience, um, Moses was, was going over the commandments with the people, warning them uh, to to follow all of God's instructions, uh, to not to not um, go into idolatry and worship false gods, and what would happen to them. He actually um, prophesied what would happen in the future, and it did. Um, he had gone over when um, God met them at Mount Sinai, uh, what had occurred, and that they forfeited the ability to have the relationship with God. Um, and therefore got the Torah. He also reminded them that God is a jealous God. And in memory of uh, the marriage ceremony between Israel and God through that covenant, 
uh, they needed to be remain faithful to to God um, because God was not going to share them with other false gods and things of the world. And again, Moses prophesied that if the Jews later forgot the Lord and served idols, they would perish from the promised land and be put to exile. And we know that that did happen. Um, in the half Torah, um, we see that uh, it, it indeed had happened. Isaiah, Isaiah was um, had mentioned that, but also had had prophesied the messianic uh, era. Um, you know when the when the Lord would come and make the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of Adonai. Um, just what we read. Um, that John said in the Brit Karsha. But uh, yes, he is prophesying Yeshua's first coming in this in these passages. Um also also a bit of messianic uh, future when when our when when our people will be comforted after all the exiles and 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 all of that part of history is completely over. So we know during Tisha B'Av the Book of Lamentations was was read, um, and the exiles had mourned that they lacked anyone to comfort them. But here we read in the Half Torah, uh, comfort, comfort, O oh my people. Um, so there's a significant shift in perspective here because God is a merciful God, even though he dealt with uh, what had occurred with with his people, uh, with with the people. He is merciful and um, will hear from them when they repent in that coming day. Jerusalem will be exalted and the people of God regathered and comforted. The suffering of the exiles will have been completed and all Israel will be saved from her enemies. And we pray that that happens speedily and in our day. As Messianic believers in our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, we believe that the ultimate comfort coming to our people will finally be realized when the Lord Yeshua returns to set up his kingdom at the time of the second coming. Indeed, he is coming soon to Zion and his reign will have no end. Amen. So we saw in Matthew, uh, it provides a glimpse of the Lord, jealous, his, the jealous heart for um, Jerusalem. Zion is a symbol of God's rule over all the earth, representing the consummation of his love for mankind, uh, called the city of great, of, it, you know, Jerusalem is known as the city of the great king, the place of Melchizedek, the restoration of paradise lost in Zion is the goal of God's redemptive work in human history. In these passages, Yeshua denounces the religious leaders of Israel for rejecting him and hindering the ultimate restoration of Jerusalem. And he says, oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those that are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as the hen gathers her her, her chips or her brood under her wings, and you would not. So your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Baruch Abba Shem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In other words, Zion will remain without comfort until Messiah Yeshua is received by Israel as the rightful king. Now, we know many of us have accepted Yeshua um, that we keep praying for for revival in 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 Israel and of our people to accept Yeshua. Many have, many have, um, and that was we those of us that participated in in the Isaiah fast um, that had to do with with Israel coming to to Messiah, getting saved. We're praying for our people. Paul, even though he he was an apostle to designated uh, for the Gentiles, he prayed for his his fellow Jewish brothers and sisters to come to the Lord. 
Um, and he mentions that in his letters to Yeshua responded um, to a, a test, basically. The, the Torah scholars and the Pharisees and Sadducees were constantly testing him. And he answered, you know, the greatest commandment, and he answered that the, the Shema um, was the greatest commandment. And then he also said in Yeshua, the second greatest commandment is you should love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, you know, the, the law and the prophets hang on both these two commandments. And that was in Mark chapter 12, um, from 28 to 34. Next, we see John the Immerser, or John, he's also known as John the Baptizer, um, actually reiterating the words of Isaiah, the voice of I am the one of voice, the voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of Adonai and make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled up and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all humanity shall see the salvation of God. And actually, John baptizes Messiah, Yeshua. Uh, so he is preparing the people prior to that, you know, and he recognizes who he is. And he knows who he is. So, um, God wants us to love him as the source of all our real and abiding good and love one another as we love, our, love ourselves. The love of God and others, think of it, the great commandment is not found in the knowledge of Torah, regardless of how edifying or noble nor in external observances, regardless of how scrupulously or beautifully observed, nor in the practice of customs, regardless of how much they might make us feel identified with God's chosen people. Uh, no. Yeshua's answer is that the greatest duty of our lives is to love God with every bit of our passion, inwardness, and strength, and to extend that same love we instinctively feel towards ourselves to others around us. When we walk in the power of the Ruach HaKadosh and the fruit of the Holy Spirit is produced within us, we will not find ourselves walking contrary to the way of the Torah. And the inward motivation of the Torah will be written on our hearts. The Torah was not abolished. People want to say, oh, we're not living under the law. We're living under grace. Yes. Yeah, that's true. We we are in the air age of grace, but by being in in the age of grace and loving the Lord, we you know it is written on our hearts to follow. Yeshua said, "If you love me, you'll keep my commandments." Well, what are His commandments? Uh, He's the Word that has become flesh. The Torah is part of the Holy Word. Okay, um, you know we need to really look at that. And people want to just, you know, they just want to throw it all out. And it's like, no. Yeshua spoke of the Torah. He spoke of the two greatest commandments and said, the prophets and the Torah hang on these two commandments. So if the Torah was null and void, he wouldn't have even mentioned the Torah. He would have said so. Well, I come and I, I'm abolishing the Torah. He said, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. As, as Paul, the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 13, verse 10, love is the fulfilling of the law. May it please the Lord to give us a heart that can love in the truth. It's important to know that. Father God, we thank you for the most powerful, powerful words that we've heard today. And we do love you with all of our heart, soul, and strength. You are our God. There is no one like you. That is absolutely true. There's no one like you. You created everything that we see in our world. You created. You can be anywhere at all times and know everything. Nothing surprises you. You are an all-knowing father. And we just love you. 
We thank you, Yeshua, also for everything that you've done. As difficult as it was for you to, to, to do, you did the will of our Father. You gave your very life for us. We thank you so much. We pray this prayer in the name above all names, the mighty name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. We are going to move into the altar call, and salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ, through Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua is his Hebrew name, and it means salvation. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences, and we know the wages of sin is death, separation from God. Our Lord took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and we could be reconciled to the Father. Before he came, there was a, an animal sacrificial system that was put in place and innocent animals were, were actually, there. they shed their blood for the covering of the sins of the people. But they they, they had, had to be specifically um, selected to be blemish-free and perfect. So that was a type and shadow of our perfect, the perfect Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, and that was Yeshua. He was perfect, spotless, blameless, sin-free, lived a perfect life. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but will have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. And that is a decision, a free will decision that God has given each and every one of us. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. But he also told Nicodemus, a Pharisee that lived in his day, um, that you must be born again, born of spirit and water, in, to, to inherit the kingdom of heaven. This fleshly body will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. Yeshua did it all for us. I mean, the world will tell you there's many paths to heaven. No, there's only one. And he, is that, he said it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. So, you know, and he did it all. If there were many ways that you could get to heaven, if you could work your way and you could do your own thing, we wouldn't have needed a Savior to come and save us from perishing but we did. And it was the only way. We have all been born through the line of Adam, and that's where the original sin started from. Yeshua was not. He was actually, he was born of a virgin, and also the Ruach of God, the Spirit of God breathed into her. So he is not born, truly born of the same line that every other human being is. So that enabled him to be our substitution for, for the penalty of penalties of sin. So he paid our sin debt in full, every single one of us. And all we need to do is confess our sins and turn from them, try to live a better life, are we going to be perfect? No, no. And, 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 and God knows that. This is why we needed a Savior. We can keep those 613 commandments. And it was very evident. That's why there was a sacrificial system that was put in place to begin with. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He has already done that. All you need to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior. 
And if you're ready to do that, um, in a moment, I am going to say a simple prayer that you can say along with me, and you can be born again and saved today. Also, by his wounds, we are healed. He was beaten brutally before he went to the cross. And by his wounds, he took, he, we are healed. He took on our illnesses and afflictions. So he did all of that for us. If you'd like to be born again and saved, if you'd like to become a member of the family of God, a child of God, you can say the simple prayer with me right now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I know who that Savior is. Savior is Yeshua, Jesus. Jesus, I do believe that you died on a cross. I believe you were buried. You were we're resurrected, and I believe you're coming again to rule and reign on this planet. I thank you. I, I thank you for paying my sin debt in full. I couldn't do it myself. I can't save myself. I realize that now. And I am so grateful for what you have done. I confess my sins. I'm asking you to send your Holy Spirit to live inside me so that I might live a better life, so that he may guide me and direct me in your ways for the rest of my life, and that I can do better than what I have had been doing. I thank you for everything that you've done for me, for wiping away my sins and giving me that, that, that grace and mercy that only you could give. I accept the gift of salvation and eternal life. I'm asking you to be my Lord and Savior. I do believe you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So through you, Yeshua, I believe that I am saved, healed, born again, set free and delivered from sin and the consequences of sin, and now am an, and, and I am healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Jesus, Yeshua's precious, mighty, and awesome name, amen and amen. You've said this prayer with me. Welcome to the family of God. I'm going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible and not through other doctrines, um, worldly doctrines and what have you. Um, and I am going to also encourage you to, to get into a Bible study um, at that local congregation or Messianic congregation that you join. Also, I'm going to encourage you to get a copy of the Bible, a hard copy of the Bible in which you can read independently yourself as well. I'm not going to tell you what that you should get a certain version. I'm going to just direct you to Bible Hub, Bible Gateway. Um, check out the different versions of the Bible. Um, the one that you are most comfortable with would probably be a good first Bible to buy because it's the one that you're most likely to read. Um, so uh, I will encourage you to do that um, and then sit down and, you know, make, make a, make a uh, commitment to read the Bible on a daily basis. Um, and, and before you do so, pray to the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. The Holy Spirit is an excellent teacher. Develop a prayer life. Uh, pray to your Heavenly Father. Yes, you are now born again into the family of God, whereby the creator of all things, the creator of, of the universe, uh, is your heavenly father. How awesome is that? You can refer to him as Abba, Father. And he wants relationship with you. He wants to relate to you. And you can just talk to him. He's always there. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is there for you. And he longs to bless his children, but he also wants faithfulness and loyalty to him as well. He loves you so much. With that being said, I am going to bring Shabbat to a close. As Shabbat draws to an end, the aroma of sweet spices lingers as the flame is extinguished until next week. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust him, will not be afraid. For the Lord Adonai is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. 
Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the various spices. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the light, the fire. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who distinguishes between holy and secular. The Aaronic blessing or the priestly blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27, when Adonai spoke to Moses, uh, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. He wanted to put his name on Benaiah Israel, and he wanted to give them a blessing. And the words that he gave were, were to bless the children of Israel. Now you... Who are born again and saved, Adonai has written his name on you and sealed you with his Holy Spirit. So this blessing is also for you. And I'm going to say the blessing in Hebrew and then I'm going to say it in English. In Hebrew it goes like this Eva Rekaka Adonai the Ishmareka Yaea Adonai Panabaleka Vikuneka Isa Adonai Panabaleka Vea Semleka Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Shavuot Tov, everyone. Have a good week. Don't forget those uh, who are participating in the class. That's Tuesday night, um, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on freeconferencecall.com. And also we have the Bible study this week from the English Standard Version, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 to 7. God bless each and every one of you. Again, Shavuot Tov. Have a